Um, hello, everyone. Uh, our speaker today, Ye Rong Xu, is the last year PhD student at the University of Palma in Italy, working with Dr. Chiro Pinto and Professor uh, Giancarlo Usumano. He got his uh, bachelor degree at Fudan University in China, uh, worked with uh, Professor Cosmo Bambi. Then he got his uh, master degree at the University of Chicago. Now he's an uh, Erasmus visitor at uh, MIT, working with Professor Aaron Kara. Um, Aaron, please take it away. Okay, thanks for the brief introduction. Uh, I'm Aaron Shi, uh, a visiting graduate student to Professor Aaron Kara at MIT. And today I would like to talk about the ultra fast outflows around highly accreting supermassive black holes. I believe most of you are familiar with the uh, agent, but in case some of are not, let me give a brief introduction to agent. The whole name of agent is active galactic nuclei, which is powered by the accretion onto the supermassive black holes. Uh, here is a schematic plot of uh, agent and the corresponding X3 spectrum. Uh, uh, the system consists of uh, a supermassive black hole in the center, surrounded by a hot plasma we call the hot corona. Uh, now I use a cursor, okay. And also the broad line region. Oh, oops. And that's a further that's a structure called torus. In general, the closer to the center is the photons with higher energies will be emitted. So in X ray band, we could probe the very inner region of agent and investigate what happens close to this. Uh, supermassive black holes. So a typical X-ray section of agent consists of a polar-like component, a reflection component, and a soft axis. Polar component results from the complementation of the disk photons from, uh, by the hot corona, and the reflection component is the reprocessing of the corona emissions onto the uh, accretion disk and also onto the further place. And the prominent features of reflection is the strong iron K emission, emission line and a reflection hump in the hard X-rays. There is also a soft access component below one or two keV, whose nature is still in the debate, but we believe it comes from uh, the inner region of the accretion disk due to its energies. Apart from accretion, Agen can also release its energy into the surrounding medium uh, in the form of radiation, winds, and jets. Uh, we named this behavior as agent feedback. So here is uh, an, an image of the agent feedback in the Perseus cluster observed by Chandra and VRA in X-ray and radio bands separately. Uh, agent feedback was invoked to explain the well-known relationship, uh, well M sigma relationship, which is the strong correlation between the M dot, uh, between the uh, mass of the supermassive black hole and the dispersion velocity of the galaxy bergers. So this relationship suggests that the growth of the supermassive black hole might be synchronized to that of the galaxy, probably due to the agent feedback which could regulate the available gas reservoir for the supermassive black holes and the new stars. Uh, although we have observed the evidence for the agent feedback, the underlying mechanism is still not quite clear. As a form with a wide opening angle, wings are regarded as a um, promising mechanism for the agent feedback. Here is a schematic plot includes all kinds of agent wings, and two of them could be observed in the X-ray band. There are warm absorbers and ultra fast outflows called the UFO. What happened? Let me change it. Okay. Okay. okay, great. Uh, let's continue. Uh, according to simulations, to have an efficient agent feedback, 
which means it could quench the star formation and reduce uh, uh, accre uh, black hole net accretion. Winds must have the po uh, powerful kinetic energy, which is larger, at least larger than 0.5% adenine luminosity. I'm more uh, particularly interested in the UFO. In UFO, the reason is that, as its name says, uh, it has ultra fast velocity and is usually highly ionized. So this kind of outflow could carry out a huge amount of kinetic energy, which might be sufficient to affect the host galaxies. In addition, its fast velocity indicates the UFO should come from the uh, inner region of the accretion disk, which might have uh, revealed some uh, connections between the accretion and the ejection close to the supermassive black holes. Although in the past two decades, people have detected UFOs in many agents, but there's still a lot of puzzles on UFOs. Uh, here are the three open questions I would like to discuss today. And, uh, and they are the, uh, the first one is, what's the long-term mechanism of UFOs? We still don't quite understand the uh, trouble mechanism of such fast outflows. The second one is, is there any connection between accretion and UFO in Asian, since both of them are expected from the accretion disk? Could, that, uh, could them have some interactions? And the last one is, are UFOs powerful enough to affect the host galaxies? It's a very fu fundamental question for UFOs. Today, I would like to uh, try to answer these three questions, or at least make uh, at least a contribute part of these questions with uh, the case studies of my, my work uh, of, on three high adenine agents. They are 1H0707, 1H1934, and Markelian 1044. But before I talk about these questions, let me give a brief introduction to the method I use, which is the X-ray spectroscopy. But due to the limitations of the current facilities, we cannot directly uh, spatial, spatial resolve the agent wings close to the supermassive black hole in the image, but we can detect them in the spectrum. Usually, UFOs are detected in the hard X-ray band with a strongly blue-shifted absorption feature. In the hard X-ray band, they are mainly dominated by the RN25 or 26 uh, ion transitions. Here is a spect X-ray spectrum of uh, Quasar PDS456. The absorption feature comes from the uh, outflowing gas in our light site, and the emission component come from the uh, plasma misaligned with our line site. Uh, besides the hard X-ray band, thanks to the high resolution uh, grating instruments on board XM, Newton, and Chandra, we could also detect the UFOs in the soft X-ray band. Uh, in soft X-rays, we could identify UFOs through multiple ion transitions instead of just a single absorption um, iron 25 or 26 feature. But the disadvantage of the soft X-rays is that they are also uh, could have some contaminations from the from low speed plasma absorption feature. So pairs are required to be taken for the UFO detection in soft X-ray band. They may have some degeneracy. And uh, so uh, then let's talk about the open questions. The first one is what's the long-term mechanism of UFO? One popular theory is a radiation driven outflow where the wings, where the wings is accelerated by the strong radiation pressure. So it's natural to expect this kind of outflow in a highly accreting systems. The upper right pan, uh, plot shows the simulation and finds this kind of outflow indeed exists in high adenine agent. Another popular uh, and tend to be the equatorial direction. And another popular theory is the magnetically driven outflow, where the wind is launched and accelerated by the uh, magnetic field lines, like the bottom right panel shows, the simulation shows, and tend to be the polar direction. Since the title of my today's talk is about the UFO around the high, a highly accreting supermassive black hole, I will talk more about the first scenario. There are two evidence supporting the radiation driven outflow. The first one was observed in a nearby 61 galaxy, R13224, where the equivalence width and the flux of the, RM20, uh, of the UFO feature uh, decreased with the X ray flux. It was explained by the gradually over ionized plasma in the stronger radiation field. 
The other evidence was observed in R1324, PDS 456, and the Macaulay 1044. The last, the last one is from my work uh, uh, by performing the flux resolved the scan flux screen. Uh, this, work, this work appeared on the archive yesterday. If you are interested, you can look at that. And uh, we, in that, this, so we find the blue shift of U4 absorption lines increase with the X3 flux. So it suggests the U4 might be correlated with the source luminosity. If we plot the U4 velocity versus X3 flux or luminosity, we could find the positive correlations between these, uh, between these two quantities. And since uh, three, these three cases are highly accreting system, so it naturally suggests that U4 is mainly dominated by the strong radiation field in high adenine agent. However, the, that statement is made from only three cases. And in the next slide, I will show you an exception and for that positive uh, correlation. It's also from my work, Ranch 0707. Uh, which was explained, uh, which uh, is uh, uh, worth estimated to have a, a highly accretion uh, rate. The left plot shows the evolution of the UFO properties versus the X3 flux. The colon we can see in the first two, two panels, uh, colon density and ionization parameter are correlated. And in the last panel, the, the UFO velocity is anti-correlated with the X3 flux. The last panel is interesting because it's opposite to the trend we observed in the previous three sources. We're, we explore several possibilities for that anti-correlation. The first one is, uh, could that be driven by the magnetic field? Uh, some MHD simulation indeed predicted a decreasing velocity trend but by uh, making an unreasonable uh, assumption. So we disfavor that explanation. Another possibility is um, uh, probably the plasma is gradually over-ionized and experience the less uh, radiation-driven force. Uh, this explanation is supported by the increase uh, of the ionization parameter. But however, the same phenomenon was also observed in R1324, but we didn't find a decreasing velocity trend in that source. So we think this explanation might be plausible, but not the main contributor for this anti-correlation. <laughs> our favorite explanation is that since this source is a, a super adenine agent and a strong radiation, we could expect the strong radiation field like this fig, uh, figure shows could pop up the inner accretion disk and uh, when the source luminosity becomes stronger, it could extend the wind lantern radius outwards, yielding a slower wind uh, UFO velocity. So, uh, based on the res that's our favorite explanation. Based on the results I show here and in the previous slides, my answer to the first open question is: UFOs in highly accreting systems are likely dominated by the radiation pressure, but is more complex than we thought. We need a sample study uh, to give a better answer to this question, which is also my ongoing project. I don't have time to talk about this, but if, if you are interested, you can ask me after the seminar. Then the second open question is, is there any connection between accretion and UFO in Asia? Actually, the UFO response to the change in the source luminosity has already answered this, give a positive answer to this question. But today I would, I would like to extend a little bit with my work on another neural one galaxy, galaxy, which is YH 1934. Uh, I perform a blind Gaussian line scan over the uh, XM Newton RGS spectrum on this source. And the result is shown in the upper panel. Uh, the, the vertical dashed Blue line represents the rest of frame energies of the ion transitions in the plasma. And we find a warm absorber and a moderate, moderately ionized UFO in this source. The UFO features are marked by the vertical green dashed lines. The, but the interesting things in this feature, uh, in this source, is that we find a strong emission line around the 1 keV, which is inconsistent with the laboratory energies. We didn't 
expects such a strong intensity of a slightly blue shifted iron 20 or slightly red shifted neon 10 emission without a strong emission line uh, without a strong oxygen 8 emission line. But the existence of that feature has been confirmed by the uh, cross correlation based Monte Carlo simulation, which also includes the look as well effect. The result is shown in the bottom panel. The significance of that feature is larger than uh, uh, is larger than four sigma. So that feature indeed exists, and we're trying to understand the nature of that feature. We tried the photoionization emission model, collisional ionization, and uh, reflection model to fit that feature. The left plot shows their contributions. The first pan in the first panel. The photonization model uh, are mainly explaining the hard residuals, so it's, it's nearly negligible in the soft X-ray band. And in the second panel, the collisional ionization model is trying to fix that feature, but you can see it's over-predicted. We find a secondary cooler and the strongly Doppler shifted reflection model can fix that feature pretty well with a significant statistical improvement. And the right plot shows the contributions from different op, uh, components in the spectral modeling. Uh, the, second, the second reflector requires a strong blue shift around the point three speed of light. And in the radius between 8 and 52 gravitational radii, a very soft ionizing field and a slightly lower inclination angle compared with the primary reflector. Of this comparison and the spectral modeling suggests that the uh, one key feature must be optically thick, probably come from the up layer of the accretion disk or the wind base. Since YH1934 is also a high antenna agent, we also expect the strong radiation field could pop up the inner accretion disk, like this uh, schematics shows. Such a uh, geometric configuration could naturally explain the slightly lower inclination angle. In addition, the escape velocity, uh, escape radius of the materials at that velocity is also consistent with our spectral modeling. So we prefer the explanation that one TV emission feature should come from the uh, re reprocessing onto the fast moving accretion disk or the wind base of the UFOs. Actually, the similar strongly blue shifted emission lines were also found in other high antenna systems, uh, such as the TDE system and the changing loop, uh, loop agent, or probably a TDE event in TDE system. Uh, uh, the work has been done by Erin and her graduate students. So, based on this project, my answer to the second open question is UFOs can not only reply, uh, respond to the accretion flow, but also can work as a reprocessor of the corona photons. It's a new field for our understanding of UFOs, and we need more work to, uh, to investigate, to help us investigate that such an interesting phenomenon. So the last open question is, are UFOs powerful enough to affect the whole the galaxy? I didn't expect I have enough time to talk about a lot about this, but at least I show uh, show one slide and give the answer. Here is a plot uh, from Tom Basie, 2013, and I marked the UFOs detected uh, in three sources from my work by the uh, by the uh, orange stars. The UFO detected in their work are marked by the blue circles. And the solid blue line represents the theoretical criterion for the agent efficient agent feedback. And you can see the UFOs from both, both from my work and, of, and from their work are all above the, that criterion. So it gives uh, its answer that open question is UFO might, might be the promising candidates for, uh, to mm -hmm. affect the host of galaxies. And the difference between my work and theirs is that my, my results are derived from the multi-ion transitions in the soft X-ray band, while theirs are made from the hard X-ray band with just a single uh, iron absorption. But our uh, both of our conclusions are consistent. 
The last slide before the conclusion is that I want to emphasize the importance of the future missions, such as Prism, hopefully to be launched in this year's August, uh, Athena, LAM, and Alpus. Uh, these future, uh, future missions have unprecedented spectrum resolution and a much larger effective area than the current facilities. With the help of these future missions, we could break the degeneracy between the UFO properties, such as ionization, ionization parameter and the outflow velocity. In addition, we could directly observe, distinguish the wind-driven mechanisms through the line profile, while the relative driven outflow have an extended red wing, and the magnetically driven outflow has an extended blue wing. Uh, in addition, with the uh, help of the large effective area, future missions will enable us to perform the on-time spectrum modeling without the need for, for smoothing the wind features. Here in the, uh, the right is the uh, LAM simulation for the UFO response to OH 1934 with only 10 kiloseconds exposure time. Uh, and we, with this simulation, we could detect the similar a uh, comparable or even better uh, significance of UFO with one order of magnitude shorter exposure time than XM Newton. And so that's uh, with this uh, future missions, we could tra trace the evolution of the UFOs on time. So that job to the uh, conclusion. My answer to the third open question is. Uh, UFOs are the most uh, promising candidates to significantly affect the evolution of the host galaxy. Uh, and that's all about my today's talk. Thank you for your attention. I'll be here for questions. Thank you, Yaro, for the nice talk. Um, do we have any questions here? Sure. So I think in some of these sources, uh, there is actually molecular material that's entrained in the health plants. And it seems like that would be a good way to approach this because you get very high resolution with ALMA uh, of that. It's a little hard to understand how the molecular material actually gets accelerated in these very high energy regions, um, but apparently it does. So you know, first of all, that could be explained. How the heck do you get a molecular cloud accelerated to 200 kilometers per second by a wind from a X-ray source? And two, uh, the, you might be able to see the details better in the uh, spectral lines from Alma. Yeah, true. Uh, actually, um, so there are some models like uh, named as the shock model. Mm -hmm. They they suggest they argue that uh, probably the uh, large scale outflows could be driven by the inner, uh, for example, like UFOs to driven and have a stratified structure of these kind of outflows and some of the molecular. Uh, Outflows will be entrained by the ultra fast uh, um, outflows. Yeah. And actually, I think, yeah, it's also impressive for me to see the uh, radio telescopes spectrum uh, resolution and to see the lines. I'm very happy to see some lines in the radio bands and to understand, understand the outflows. Uh, early on, you had the a plot of the velocity of the UFO going with the flux of the source, uh, and interpreted some of that as um, I'm trying to remember it properly. Uh, change in ionization state of the you may hear material being accelerated. Yes. Yes. I would. Isn't it a bit? You have to be very lucky to get your change in flux or luminosity of the source in just the regime where that is turning is that that change in ionization is happening yeah true actually it's uh, related to a parameter uh, it's related to the recombination time scale mm -hmm. and uh, since we could detect the UFOs in this uh, it, actually these are the flux 
to resolve the spectroscopy results. So uh, if we could detect the UFOs in all of this spectrum, it means uh, at least the, the UFO could recombinate uh, faster than our uh, minimum time, uh, time segment of that blocks resolved spec, uh, spectroscopy. Yeah, so it's, uh, I mean, uh, let me show you some, let's show the light curve. Yeah, for example, like the light curve in Wedge 90707, uh, and we perform the flux resolved uh, uh, spectroscopy in seven, uh, in seven flux levels. And uh, if we could detect the UFOs in of this spectrum, that means the, uh, the average of the average time scale of each flux levels is uh, larger than the recombination time scales. So yeah, we are actually we are very lucky, and uh, the UFO could have that means the UFO has a uh, high density, and it could respond so quick, so quickly to the source variability. So yeah, actually we are lucky, and also the UFO is a uh, high density, uh, have high density. Yeah. Any further question? Do we have any question from Zoom? Yeah. Okay, I can take a quite a naive one. Okay. So you mentioned that you, you um, that there's a a more uh, systematic uh, uh, study that is needed for to answer your first question, like how to um, launch the UFOs. So, do you have a? Can you see more specific about this plan? Uh, uh, I collect several um a, a dozen and not a dozen, several agents, and they have the different uh itinerate itinerary ratio and different uh mass. And we're trying to understand also perform by perform the flux result or some cases by perform the uh, time result spectroscopy to see what's the UFO uh, virus with uh, salt X-ray luminosity. And actually the currently the current result is that uh, it's more complex than we thought. And also it's uh, related to the question from uh, I don't know the name, but a previous question. It's related to the recombination time scale. In some cases, we could detect, so you, uh, we find a positive correlation between the UFO properties and the flux. But in some cases, we find that it's just a flat, which means the, either the source variability is not large enough or the UFO cannot uh, re, uh, respond instantaneously. And also, we detect a very slightly uh, uh, negative and uh, correlation, uh, anti-correlation, and but with several interesting uh, results. I, I still need to in investigate them more. So, yeah, that's all what I can mention and talk about this question. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So uh, let's thank Yero again. <laughs> if you have any further questions, um, you are welcome to come to discuss with Yero.